How's it going my curious bakers? Hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll look at the best ways of covering our bread dough as it's fermenting. So let's go to the kitchen and see what's going on. We all know to cover our dough so it doesn't develop a dry skin on its surface. Besides not looking nice, it can give the bread a strange texture too. There are a few things that you can use to cover your dough. A clean kitchen towel like this is a great option and I'm pretty sure there's a high chance that you are using it in your bread making. In my opinion, plastic wrap is the easiest, most convenient thing to use, but it has one big disadvantage, and that is the fact that it's single-use plastic, and we should definitely cut down on this stuff. Saying that, I use it all the time, but for good reason. I want you to be able to see the dough rising and changing over time, and no one has invented the clear tea towel yet. I do not recommend using plastic wrap, but for me, it's a necessary evil, and I only use it when I'm filming these videos. My reasoning is that I get you into bread making, then you stop buying bread from the supermarket, and that offsets my plastic use. It makes sense in my mind anyway. But I'm not here to preach. This is a comparison video. We're here to find out which method works best, and what happens when you don't cover your dough at all. I'm making one large batch of dough, I'm going to divide it into three equal pieces, and then we'll leave them to ferment, and then we'll bake them, and see how they turn out. One of them will be covered with a cloth, one will not be covered at all, and the final one will be covered with plastic wrap. This dough has a relatively low hydration of 63%, so the surface of it should dry out quite easily, because the lower the hydration is, the quicker the dough will dry out. Now it's pretty obvious that whilst the dough is bulk fermenting, it will most likely spend that time in some kind of container, be it some kind of bowl or a tub, and quite often a bowl or a tub could have a lid, and that is hands down the best thing to cover your dough with whilst it's going through bulk fermentation. If your bowl doesn't have a lid, Try using a lid from a cooking pot or a pan. Anything that is practical and reusable will do. I've been using this lid on my large bowl for a long time and it works perfectly. It doesn't fit right because it comes from a different bowl, but it does the job. But we're not dealing with lids today, so I'm not going to do the logical thing. I'll still be using a plastic wrap and a cloth, even during bulk fermentation. I'll treat this recipe like standard white bread. It'll be fermented for one hour, then I will fold it, then I'll give it one more hour of fermentation, then I'll pre-shape it, I'll let it rest, then do the final shaping, leave it to final proof, and then bake. Okay, one hour is up, and we can compare the surfaces now. You can kind of see it from the color already. The dough that was covered with plastic wrap has the lightest color. The one that wasn't covered at all is the darkest. And the one that was covered with the tea towel is in between. And of course, in this case, the color also indicates dryness. The middle dough is very dry. The one on the right still feels quite sticky. And the one on the left is not too dry, but it is getting there. And of course the reason why it's slightly dry is because the towel is absorbing moisture from the dough. But let's just quickly give them a fold and I'll leave them to ferment for one more hour. The dryness of the middle dough at the moment is not a big deal. And by folding, we are essentially refreshing the surfaces of all these doughs. It's almost like we're back where we started from. And at this point, it may just seem that it's almost not worth covering your dough at all. Because nothing really negative happened. After the second hour of fermentation, we are getting pretty much the same result as earlier. The one with the plastic wrap has the moistest skin, the one with the towel is slightly drier, and the one without is the driest. The only negative effect that I can think of now is that as we fold the dry dough, we move that dry skin into the middle of it, and it gets rehydrated by the moisture inside the dough. And that means that the dough itself is losing moisture, which means that the hydration of it is lowering. Now obviously the plastic wrap is performing the best, but here's a simple trick to preventing your towel from absorbing moisture. If you moisten your towel before you use it, it will not absorb moisture from your dough, and it may just make it stay moister for longer. And this is only required for lower hydration recipes. Okay, back to the recipe for a second. The dough has gone through bulk fermentation. Now, we can pre-shape it and leave it to rest. And this is the point that the dough leaves the bowl. If you are making only one loaf or some smaller rolls, you can use the bowl itself for covering the dough. It is generally from this point on that you need to think about covering your dough with something but a lid. Because, of course, we don't have an infinite amount of differently sized lids at home. But again, you can use a bowl if you're only making one loaf. You can even do that during final proofing, if the bowl fits over it. Now, as we can see here, one disadvantage of the cling film is that it sticks. And the towel can stick too. To avoid any stickage, dust dough with flour before covering it. That is especially important in higher hydration dough. More so with the cling film than the towel. And that is another good point for the tea towel. It's not as sticky as the cling film. Okay, back to the recipe. We have done the final shaping, now we'll cover our dough and we'll leave one uncovered and we'll leave it for the final proof. And you know what? At this point I was quite surprised because I really hoped that the dough that was not covered would get really really dry. 
I kind of wanted it to fail and look terrible. I expected it, but it's holding up pretty well. I guess if the window was open and there was a little draft going through the kitchen, it would be worse. But so far, it may seem that in some cases, you might not need to cover your dough at all. Saying that, I would not recommend it. I don't think there is good reason for not covering your dough. But in this particular recipe, at this particular hydration, and these particular fermentation times, it might just be okay. Especially now that I'm moistening the dough before it goes in the oven. Which is of course standard practice. And there we have it. Three perfectly fine looking loaves. I don't see any big differences between them. I think I got lucky here. The hydration of the dough was not extremely low. The fermentation times were quite short. That's why the dough in the middle did not develop a very dry crust. You should definitely cover your dough. And I think a lid and a clean towel are the best tools for it. Plastic wrap is convenient, but it's not reusable. I use the tea towel myself whenever I'm not filming videos, which these days is quite rarely to be honest. Usually I only bake when I film. I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic. What do you use to cover your dough? Is there anything else that can be used besides a lid, a towel, plastic wrap or an upside down bowl or a tray? I know this isn't the most exciting topic, but quite a few people were asking me about this in the comments section. That is what I do here, I answer your questions. But let's just get back to our breads for a second. We can see that the one on the right has the crispiest and nicest looking crust. And that is not because it was covered with plastic wrap. It obviously opened up differently as it was baking. A larger portion of its crust was facing the heating element. That is the only reason why it looks better. But we are not done here. Let's see what happens when you really let the crust dry out. Here I have a 55% hydration dough, so it's quite dry. I'm going to leave it to bulk ferment without folding it halfway through. Now this is a dry crust. You really don't want this to happen to your dough. What can happen now is that when we fold it and shape it, all these flaky bits will end up inside it. Then there is a chance that when you cut a slice of your bread, you may have some dry streaks running through it. Unlike earlier, even after shaping, we still have dry pieces of dough on the surface. And it will only get drier from here. Now there are a couple of situations where you might not need to cover your dough during the final proofing stage. One example would be a really oily focaccia. The oil protects it from drying out. I have done this in previous videos. Another example would be tiger bread. It has a coating applied on the surface before final proofing. And that is in fact intentionally left to dry out slightly. But those are just two examples that I can think of right now. Okay, so here's the result of our final test. Obviously it doesn't look great. Those dry crusty bits are not very appealing and they do not come off. But there is another problem which is not as obvious, the color of the crust. It is not very dark, it looks quite dull, it doesn't have any shine to it. That's what happens when the surface is not moistened before baking. And this is not only a problem for a neglected dough like this one, the dough should have a nicely moistened crust before it goes in the oven in general. And if you want to learn more about steaming, then go check out my video about it in the Principles of Baking playlist. And you can find plenty of other interesting videos there too. So what's your preferred method? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.